Hello, welcome to our semiconductor education program. This is Vincent Chan. In this lecture, I'm going to teach you a very interesting circuit called CMOS rail-to-rail -rail op amp. CMOS rail-to-rail -rail operational amplifier part one, analysis by inspection. I'm going to teach you this circuit through uh, two lectures. This one only focus on the analysis by inspection for the small signal analysis. Let's quickly go through what we learned before. The Foley Casco CMOS op amp, which is composed by the MOS input differential pair, Casco transistors, 3, 4, and the 5, 6, 7, 8 plays the role of the Casco current mirror. So now for the sake of uh, simplicity, let's try to so let's do this. Let's just replace the transistor symbol into a circuit symbol, the constant current source. So see the Q9 and the Q10 now becomes the constant current source with the bus current of IB. And the one on the bottom, the Q11, is also another constant current source. This is replaced by a current source symbol of I. All right, so orange current source with IB and red current source with I. So now I'm going to convert this into rail-to-rail -rail version, to rail-to-rail -rail op amp, okay? And I'm gonna preserve the differential and the casco and take, take out the casco current mirror. So see, this is out, it's taken away. So Casco current mirror is now taken away. This is one faulty casco. And I'm going to bring in another one, but with an opposite polarity. Okay? So opposite, opposite polarity means this one is the MMOS differential pair. But the second one is the PMOS differential pair. You see the PMOS differential pair? Because it's the PMOS. So it's kind of upside, upside down, right? So orange MOS to red, and red PMOS to orange, okay? And then what? Then we add another pair of Casco transistor. So as you can imagine, it's gonna be MOS, right? It's gonna be MOS. Because the first version, the first counterpart, it's the PMOS casco. So the second faulty casco is going to be MOS cascoding pair, which is the Q7 and the Q8. And then we kind of rail to rail. We do something like this. Okay? We do something like this. You see? This! And we're going to take the fully differential, which means the differential in. You see the non-inverting for the first Foley Casco, non-inverting, inverting, left, right. For the second Foley Casco, non-inverting, inverting, right, left. And this is the differential in. So be, a, be careful. These two non-inverting is connected to each other, all right? And this two inverting is going to, the gate of Q4 and the gate of Q2 is going to tie to each other on chip to the inverting input terminal. And the gate of Q3, which is the PMOS, and the gate of Q1, which is the MOS, is going to connect to each other. So if you use the op operational amplifier symbol for the inverting, Terminal, if you come in, then you see a pair of transistor. If you come in, you see another pair of transistor, MOS and the PMOS. So this is the differential in and the differential out. Differential out. You see the differential out, VO. Differential in, differential out, which is called a fully differential. So now, analysis by inspection. Analysis by inspection. I want you to, because you are supposed to be very familiar with this kind of analysis by inspection. 
because we've done this many times through different kind of operational amplifier. So now it's your time to show you to abide what you learned before. Although this is the first time, I don't think it's too much for you. Okay, just try this. So spend five minutes to see how far you can go. Okay, five minutes. So I'll be back in five minutes. All right, I'm back. So how far can you go? Just see the, wa the, the watch, right? Right? So 9, 6 to 3 o'clock. Like this. Mm. Um, mm. Like this. And going like this. Five. So it's going to be five, Q5, one, two, six. Five, Q5, one, two, six. Okay. This is the analysis done for the first part. What about the second part? From three o'clock to 12 o'clock to nine o'clock. Mm. Three, 12, you get it? And then go up, and seven goes down. So seven, three, four, and then eight. And then what's next? What's next? Seven, three, four, and eight. So next, how are we going to do next? Norton. I don't know how many times I taught you this. How many times? Finesse. Norton equivalent. Norton. Then the blue. You have the red blue. You have the right blue. For the negative, the inverting blue is going down. Right? So if you kind of Fold it, the upper part, and then you see I I, so two I. If you fold the Q five Q six down, then you see up up, on the right two I. So two I. So what is the I? V D divided by two over G M. So G M times the V D. G M times the input differential. And then output the distance. So output the distance. So just pull in the two output resistance, two RO. Just based on that, because of the due to the circuit symmetry, these two RO should be the same. Then you're done. Right? So the right hand side voltage deduct minus the left hand side voltage. Then give you this answer. Two GM are out. Two GM are out. But did you realize that for the left hand side GM? Because it's coming from the MS differential. So which is supposed to be the MS transconductance. And the right hand side, the Norton, is coming from the PMOS input differential. So the GM is supposed to be GMP. Okay? Of course, I want to get a big picture, I, but I just don't want the, the too many symbols or I want the simplicity. But so this is, I just want to remind you, this is assume the transconductance of the MRs and the PMRs are the same. Could this be possibly true? Would this, this be possible? Yes, it's possible, right? Because as long as you adjust the bias, and although the mobility has a difference, you adjust the bias and uh, 
you adjust the geometry, then it's possible that you can adjust the two same transconductors. Okay. But if the geometry is the same, but due to the mobility difference, then there's a difference between these two GM. But you got get what I mean. So now I will, I, have, I want to throw you a, a last question. Okay. In under what constraint and what condition this gain expression apply? In other words, under what condition you can use this gain? In other words, under what bias condition? Under what bias condition the up hand is gonna present, it's gonna demonstrate this kind of two GMRO low frequency gain. And under what condition this is not true? Let me give you a hint. Because this answer coming from this two Norton. So this two Norton coming from what? One coming from the MRs input stage. And right hand side coming from right hand side's PMOS input stage. So only these two input stage operates properly Can this two GMRO gain expression be applied? But either one of the input stage doesn't work properly, this equation is gonna fail. Okay? So think about this. Just try to answer the last question I'm going to ask you is under what constraint? This gain equation can be applied. So I want to think about this before you move on to the next lecture, which I will explain in detail. So I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching.